Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Tara and here on my channel, I teach you guys how to make homemade skincare products. So if you're new to my channel, then you want to know that I have been doing a series called Formulating Cosmetics for Beginners. So even if you're a beginner and you just came to my channel, then you can learn exactly how to formulate cosmetics by watching this series. So I have a lot of videos in this series already. I'll link in the description box to my playlist with all the videos I've done already. So if you haven't watched those videos yet, I recommend watching those first before you watch this one. So this video Video today is going to be all about toners and we're basically going to be talking about like what a toner is what makes a toner a toner and ingredients that you can add into toners toners are basically really easy to formulate we won't actually be writing a formula for a toner in this video because if you watched a couple videos ago in this series I explained you guys how to write a cosmetic formula so as I talk about what a toner is and what goes in it, you should already have a good idea of how to write a formula for a toner. But I will have two more toner related videos after this video because I'm gonna be making two different kinds of toners after this, just so you guys can get a good idea of what my formulation for a toner looks like and what ingredients I choose to use in each type of toner. So this will all make a lot more sense once we get into it. I will be reading straight from my blog, basically. I'm not good at memorizing scripts and there's a lot of information I typically cover in my video. Videos. So it's a lot easier for me just to write out my blog first and then go back and use my blog as a reference So if I'm looking down a lot, that's why first let's figure out what the definition of a toner is So the definition of a toner is an astringent liquid applied to the skin to reduce oiliness and improve its condition But a toner actually does a lot more than that. So toners made their start as being acne fighters They were typically used by people with oily acne prone skin and they used the toners to really dry out their skin and remove remove like any excess oils and typically they could even like burn the skin but as the skincare industry has grown and just you know how many products we have nowadays there are so many different kinds of products so toners have really developed and changed in a number of ways so still to this day they are used as acne fighters to dry out the skin or remove excess oils but they also do much more than that so there's different types of toners for different skin types so today overall toners do a number of things they can help rid the skin of excess oils like we said before help rid the skin of dirt and leftover makeup after cleansing they help restore your skin to its natural ph after cleansing preps the skin for a moisturizer slash serum and they can help shrink pores they can combat dryness and even have anti-aging effects so as we can see they do a lot more than just drying out the skin and removing excess oil they can do a number of things it just depends on which type of toner you buy and what skin type it's formulated for so obviously if you suffer from oily acne prone skin you want a toner that's basically drying that will help dry up your skin get rid of those excess oils because if you have acne prone skin, your skin is producing way too much oils and it's clogging up your pores, which is what is creating pimples. So typically if you have oily acne prone skin, you want to use a toner that helps dry out your skin. So it can potentially help unclog those pores and it just preps your skin to have a nice base to add a moisturizer. And even though you may have oily acne prone skin and you probably skip that moisturizer, I recommend not skipping it because sometimes having really dry skin can also be the cause of your acne. I know it's kind of weird, but having hydrated moisturized skin is really important to have a good complexion and it can even help prevent wrinkles or, you know, fine lines in the future. So having hydrated skin is really important, especially if you're older with adult acne, you just want to make sure you stay hydrated and you're not drying out your skin too much. So you want to be using a toner after your cleansing and before you apply a moisturizer. The toner will also help restore your pH level after using a cleanser because sometimes a cleanser can throw off your skin's natural pH level. So that's another reason it's important to use a toner, especially when you got oily acne prone skin. So if you have really dry skin or even like sensitive skin, you want to find toners that are moisturizing, that have humectants. Uh, rose water is a very popular one for people with dry sensitive skin. You want to make sure you're not getting one really that has witch hazel. I know everybody's skin type is different and you may have dry sensitive skin and you can handle witch hazel. I personally have really dry sensitive skin and my skin cannot handle witch hazel. I don't like it. If I'm using a toner, I skip the witch hazel altogether. I recommend witch hazel for people with oily acne prone skin. And if you have dry sensitive skin, a rose water toner is, is a great idea. So now I want to mention a few ingredients that are commonly used in toners and what their benefits are. So when you're making or buying a toner, you know what kinds of ingredients to look for and what their benefits are. The first ingredient 
is rose water. Rose water is extremely moisturizing, it's soothing, and it can even help combat redness. So rose water is good for dry sensitive skin. It can even be used on acne prone skin, but it's typically used more on the dry sensitive skin. It's also great for mature skin as well. Um, aloe vera, okay, aloe vera is just good for everybody. It's moisturizing, soothing, reduces redness. It's great for every skin type. You really can't go wrong with aloe vera. Another common ingredient, we kind of already discussed it, when I mentioned rose water, but hydrosols. Rose water is a hydrosol, but there are so many different hydrosols out there. There's lavender water, there is lemon balm water, there is a strawberry water, there is grape water, there's green apple water. There are so many different ones, and they all have such lovely fragrances. And hydrosols are a great ingredient to add into toners because it will help give your toner just a nice natural fragrance and will also add benefits. Most hydrosols are really uh, hydrating, and each one basically has their own benefits depending on what type it is. So if you want to use something that's not quite as like basic like rose water because everybody uses rose water, you want to find something that's more like different like I mentioned grape water or strawberry water. Go find those, see what their benefits are, and see if it suits your skin type. Another great ingredient is chamomile extract. Chamomile is very soothing and it's typically fine for really any skin type because it's great for acne prone skin because it's soothing because acne can cause inflammation and irritation so it can help soothe that down if you have dry irritated skin it can help soothe that skin another great ingredient is cucumber extract because a lot of us already know cucumbers are very soothing it kind of helps reduce inflammation that's why people use it on their under eyes and it can actually help tighten pores which is something that toners are typically used for typically witch hazel is what will tighten your pores so if you're not using witch hazel in a toner cucumber extract is a great ingredient to add instead of witch hazel if you know your skin can't handle witch hazel because that will help tighten your pores. The next ingredient, as I just mentioned, is witch hazel. It helps remove oils and it helps tighten pores, so it's great for oily, acne-prone skin. And like I mentioned, if you have dry, sensitive skin, you might want to stay away from it. If you have mature skin, witch hazel is probably okay with you. It just kind of depends on what type of mature skin you have. Some people have mature skin that breaks out and is oily. Some people have mature skin that is dry and sensitive. So it just depends on what type of mature skin you have. Another ingredient is glycerin. It's a natural humectant that helps draw moisture to the skin and it's very moisturizing. So I typically like to use glycerin in most of all my toners because like I keep saying hydration is super important and adding some hydration in with your toner is really good especially when you're using a drying toner. So vegetable glycerin, you can't go wrong with it. The next ingredient is green tea extract. It's an anti-inflammatory, it's full of antioxidants, and typically it's great for all skin types. I find myself using green tea extract more in mature uh, skin products because it has tons of antioxidants, and antioxidants are great for mature skin. They're great for everybody, but mature skin is typically looking for more of those antioxidants. And green tea is also great for like acne. So even if you have mature skin and you're suffering from acne, the green tea can still help combat that along with adding antioxidants and helping add moisture to that mature skin as well. So the next ingredient is willow bark extract and willow bark extract is an antimicrobial, it exfoliates and it's anti-inflammatory. So I typically always use willow bark extract in products for oily acne prone skin because it does help gently slough off dead skin cells from the face, but it's not irritating at all either. So even sensitive skin can handle it. Another great ingredient to add into toners are hydrolyzed proteins. Hydrolyzed proteins are moisturizing and depending on which hydrolyzed protein you use, it can have different benefits. Most of them all are very hydrating and they're all great for the skin, but each of them are slightly different in their own way. So depending on on what skin type you have or you know what effects you're looking for in a toner will determine which hydrolyzed protein you want to use. Last but not least, I basically already touched on this, but botanical extracts in general are great ingredients to add in toners. There are so many different botanical extracts. I just wanted to highlight some that I find are very popular and have great benefits, but there are so many other extracts out there. So whatever extract your skin really likes, feel free to add it in toners. I've used so many different extracts here on my channel, so I'm sure you guys are aware there's so many of them out there. I just wanted to add all botanical extracts in general into like one category. All of them have different benefits, so whatever toner you're trying to formulate, whatever skin type you have, will determine which extract is best to use in your toner. So these are just a few ingredients that I personally love to use in toners. Obviously, if you're formulating your own toner, use whatever ingredients that you love. These are just ingredients that I find myself really liking to use in toners. Um, another thing I want to mention, just because I, I probably might 
like and a comment about it. Apple cider vinegar is a common ingredient used in toners. If you do have a skin type that can handle apple cider vinegar, which typically it's more of an oily acne prone skin that's not sensitive. Like I keep saying time and time again, I have dry sensitive skin and I really can't handle apple cider vinegar. I also don't like the scent of it. So I don't wanna be putting a product on my face that stinks. So that's why I don't really recommend apple cider vinegar. But if you find good benefits from it and your skin's improving from it, go ahead and use apple cider vinegar in your toner, so that's completely fine. My skin just gets super red when I use it and just burns and it just stinks. So I don't find my skin reacts well with it. If you want an alternative, I do believe they have apple cider vinegar extract, but that would be a great alternative if you can't stand the smell of apple cider vinegar, but you love its benefits. So just wanted to mention that because I, I know I'll probably get a comment about it in the comments. So now that you guys know what my favorite ingredients are to add into toners, let's talk about actually formulating the toner itself, like picking and choosing which ingredients. So the first toner I want to talk about formulating is a toner for oily acne prone skin. So first off with any toner for oily acne prone skin, I think witch hazel is a great ingredient to add. So witch hazel is safe to use at up to 100%. So you could use just pure witch hazel on your skin as a toner and that's fine. That works as a great toner. But typically when we're making ourselves a homemade toner, we want it to be a little bit more fun and add extra ingredients for extra benefits. So an ingredient I think goes perfectly well with witch hazel is aloe vera because like I said it's moisturizing so it helps combat that drying effect from the witch hazel that may be caused. It also helps inflammation so if you have irritation from picking at your pimples or anything, it'll help soothe that. So I think aloe vera and witch hazel make a great combo. So you could easily use just 50% witch hazel and 50% aloe vera liquid as a toner. That would be completely fine. Just make sure you add in a water soluble broad spectrum preservative if you're doing that. But to make this more fun, I want to add in a couple more ingredients. Let's add an extract or two. I would recommend adding in some willow bark extract. Make sure you're following the suggested usage rate with that and we will talk more about the actual like formulation in my next video but adding some willow bark extract is great another extract I think would go perfectly well is chamomile extract if you don't want to use the extracts you don't have to you can use just one of them you can use both you can use a completely different extract if you want and one last ingredient I want to mention that I think would be great to add in the toner is vegetable glycerin because as we discussed it's a natural humectant so it will help draw moisture to the skin as well to help combat that dryness that witch hazel may be doing to your skin. Depending on your skin type will determine which ingredients you think is best. And last but not least make sure you're using a broad spectrum preservative that is water soluble. Use a preservative super important. Now let's talk about one for dry skin. First off rose water. I think that is a great ingredient to add into toners for dry sensitive skin. Um, you could use just rose water by itself but using rose water by itself that's just boring so let's add some more ingredients to it first off we need to use a vegetable glycerin because vegetable glycerin as I keep saying is a natural humectant it helps draw moisture to the skin so that will go perfect with the rose water you could also use some aloe vera if you want but since I used that in the last recipe I discussed I'll skip it for this one um, you could also use any other hydrosols if you want but we're just gonna be using rose water in this toner for dry skin I also think it'd be a really good idea to add a hydrolyzed protein protein to a toner for dry skin because as I mentioned before hydrolyzed proteins are very hydrating and they have other skin benefits depending on which one you use. Um, I also recommend using cucumber extract. As I said cucumber extract is soothing and it can help tighten pores so since we won't have witch hazel in this toner to help tighten our pores that cucumber extract will do great for that and it will be soothing to the skin as well. And of course just like the last toner you're going to need a water soluble broad spectrum preservative for this toner as well. And also, you may not think about this, but you will also need to lower the pH of this toner with citric acid because in the toner before, we didn't need citric acid because witch hazel actually lowers the pH level enough to be a skin loving pH of around 5.5. But rose water and all these ingredients and the toner for dry skin, it doesn't add up to be a skin loving pH. So you wanna use some citric acid to lower that pH to around 5.5. So just keep that in mind when you're formulating toners. You want to check the pH to make sure it's a pH around your skin's natural pH level, which is 5.5. And you can use citric acid to lower that I talked all about how to change the pH in a previous video. So if you don't know how to change pH levels of cosmetics, I'll link that video down below for you guys. So now that we have discussed what a toner is, what it does,
recipes and ingredients that go good in toners, in my next video, we can actually go to formulate a toner. So in my next video, I'll be making a toner for oily acne prone skin and you'll actually see the formulation all written out. And then in the video after that, we'll be making a toner for dry skin and you'll see that formulation all written out. So this entire video can make a little bit more sense because I know there was a lot of just like information in this video that could have been overwhelming for you. It'll make more sense in the next couple of videos and you can actually see how a toner is formulated. Toners are really easy to make, so you'll find that out in my next video. So I do hope you guys found this video informative. I hope you guys understand toners a little bit more and have a good idea of what you can add in them. Um, if you have any suggestions on ingredients that you like to use in toners, leave it down in the comments below. I'd love to know what you like in your toners. And yeah, one more thing is I do have a Patreon and uh, I offer a bunch of stuff over there. But specifically, I have a tier that is $10. And in that tier, you have early access to videos, access to my blog, and you get a shout out at the end of each of my videos, along with a link to whatever website you want in my description box. And I have three lovely people to shout out. The first one is Herbalist Tracy, who owns Essence of Nature. I did a review on her products a few videos ago. I will link that review down below as well, so you can go watch it, so you can figure out what she sells and have a quick look at her shop. So go check that out. Um, the next person is Musical Mood Ring, who owns Stardust Bath and Body. As of right now, when I'm recording this video, her website is not live, but you can hop on over to her website, put your email in, and get notified when her website goes live. Last but not least is Nature's Farm Girl, who owns naturesfarmgirl.com. She sells all kinds of natural skincare products and bath products, so go check her out. All the links will be down in the description box. So if you want a shout out, go to my Patreon, subscribe to my $10 tier, and you'll have a shout out at the end of each of my videos. So one more thing, I promise this is it. I do sell natural skincare products over on Etsy. I'm sure you guys already know, but if you're new here, then you don't. Link up here, link in the description box. Check out my products if you want. But yeah, so that is everything I have for you guys today. Hope you're enjoying the series. And uh, yeah, so hope to see you guys next time. Bye. I'm stuck in the motions I've been consumed by the wrath of time Like I'm from I'm shy